Okay, I'm going to talk about a couple of things uh, relating to uh, a couple of comments that I got. Uh, one is about Easter, and one is about the Jews and why they don't believe in the New Testament. Okay, first of all, I look at Easter in a very similar way that I look at Christmas. Christmas is a celebration of the birth of Jesus, so the birth of baby Jesus, right? And so paganism has mixed itself with uh, this holy day of celebrating the birth of Jesus. Um, I'm firmly convinced of that. And uh, it's like we got two holidays being celebrated on one day. And so also with Easter, we have the celebration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ. And then you've got this thing with the bunny and the eggs. It's like two holidays in one day. And I, I agree with those people that say paganism has mixed itself in with the Christian holiday. And the, the thing is, if you say that Easter has nothing at all to do with Jesus, I, you're making, you're going too far. Yeah, you're, for one thing, I, I don't care. I really don't care about this. This is not something I get bullheaded about. It's just I have an opinion. I'm going to share it. And if you have a different opinion, I think you're going to be, I think you're wrong. And that's, it's that simple. All right. So you look at Good Friday. Good Friday is always the Friday before Easter Sunday. And Good Friday is the remembering or celebration, if you will, whatever you want to call it, of the death of Jesus Christ. When Jesus died, he was the, made the sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. And then on Sunday is the recognition, remembrance, celebration, whatever, of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So to say that this has nothing at all to do with Jesus is, I think you're going too far. You're putting too much worship into paganism. You're demanding and you're stamping your foot down and saying, no, this is paganism. It's like you're fighting for pagans against Jesus Christ. That's what it looks like to me. It's like these guys that you watch, they have these videos of all these Hollywood movies, all these uh, satanic symbolisms. It's like they're worshiping that stuff. They're, they're like saying, look how evil these people are. And they're praising it and worshiping it. That's what it looks like to me. So I don't, I'm, I'm, I don't want to get nasty about this, but I think y'all are making too big of a deal, trying too hard to make something out of nothing. What do they say? Uh, making a mountain out of a molehill. Easter is the celebration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's good enough for me. All right, you guys are getting caught up on too many things. That doesn't mean anything. If The most important thing is your salvation. And I, I got to wonder, are, are you even saved? Do you need a Savior? Are you, are you uh, the righteous or are you a sinner in need of a Savior? And that's what I've been trying to point out to you all, and I think some of you are missing it. But, okay, so, Jews and why they don't believe in Jesus. Okay, so, uh, this is, uh, I think, explained in Matthew, or no, 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 uh, John 5. I shouldn't guess. I'm way off. I'm sure of it. No. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so, for had he believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. Okay, so this is Jesus talking to the Jews that don't believe in the New Testament. So this clearly is an example that not only do they not believe the New Testament, they don't believe the Old Testament either. And I heard somebody ask a great question the other day. Why don't Jews offer uh, sacrifices anymore? Well, it's it's because uh, because of Jesus. 
I mean, put it simply, we have a one-time sacrifice once and for all, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross, and his sacrifice, his death is uh, covers all the sins of the whole world. So when they had sacrifices and made offerings and all that in the Old Testament, they were doing it to cover their sins for that week or for whenever. So when Jesus did it, that covers all the sins forever and ever, past, present, future, forever and ever. His death on the cross completes that transaction, if you will. All right, so you could say you could say that the that the sacrifices in the Old Testament or temporary, per, you know, uh, transactions, if you will, but uh, Jesus made it official, final, and forever. Okay, and so uh, you know, I've heard people say that uh, Jews are God's holy people. Well, uh, I mean that that to me is is every bit it's more ridiculous than this idea that Easter has nothing to do with Jesus. In Matthew twenty one, Jesus says, "Therefore I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof." Now, who is this nation? Is it t being taken away from nineteen forty eight Israel and given to uh, modern day Iran? What what's that mean? Well, obviously. It doesn't mean that, right? Obviously, it means there's no longer a physical nation, but there's a spiritual nation, right? And I think uh, in First Peter, oh, how's that word? Uh, uh, peculiar nation, people, I don't know. Let's see if this... First Peter 2, verse 9, But ye are chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation. He's calling Christians a holy nation. We are a holy nation. We are the chosen generation. We are a royal priesthood. We're royalty. If we're royalty, if we're the chosen generation, and if we, Christians, are a holy nation, what's that tell you about modern-day Jews? Uh, you think these people that reject Jesus Christ are the holy people of God? What kind of God do you worship? Really? So, we are royalty. And this, this is unbelievable, really. Uh, and it should have been known also that God is no respecter of persons. So that, you know, there's no Jew nor Greek, we are all one in Christ Jesus. No Jew, no Gentile, we're one in, in the body of Christ. When we are born of God, we are baptized into his body, and he dwells within us, and he will never leave us nor forsake us. We are sealed by the holy seal of promise unto the day of redemption, and um, all that come to me, my Father given to me, Jesus says, and I shall lose nothing. He's not going to lose one of you that are saved, that are born of God. All right, so um, we are royalty. God knows who we are. And when you read the New Testament, it I mean, you could get this from the Old Testament as well. The fact is, we all need a Savior. None of us can live up to the standards of God. Nobody can live up to the law or the perfection of Jesus Christ. We all fall short. We all need a Savior. And it's those people that recognize the fact that they need a Savior are the ones who... Uh, God will come into. It's not those that think they don't need us. That's. It's not those that think what they're doing is making them a good person. And there's a whole lot of people out there today. Uh, they used to have a saying for it: "The holier than now people." And uh, so it's a very sad and wretched world we live in. Who can save me from this body of death? Hmm? Think about it. 